This is The Coacherian, where coaches go to grow. Coacherian, like a terrarium for coaches. It's the pocket-sized podcast for leaders who coach to gain skills and confidence. Welcome to The Coacherian. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Coacherian. If you haven't listened before, we're Dana, Wendy, and Gary. This is the smallest podcast spread over the longest distance, over 5,000 miles from San Diego via Dallas to London, England. The topics we want to bring up today to talk about is how do you find the right coach for you? I thought this was an interesting topic because, you know, I guess if you're an executive leader and you are needing a coach, sometimes you're just assigned one. Other times, I think you want to find, if you're the coach and you're trying to find the right coachee, who are the right coachees for you? And I think over the over the years that I've been coaching, I think it's about 10 years now, I haven't come across anybody that was challenging, maybe at least about on my hand, I can count five people that challenging to coach that I did not want to coach again. And normally it was because our values and beliefs were different. Or it might have been that I was coaching somebody that just didn't want to work, didn't want to do the work and wanted me to do the work. And that's hard because you have to kind of decide. I mean, you can let go of your coachee at any point if you're not seeing results and you're not feeling like they're getting results. And I think that's the kind of the coaching agreement that you come into in the very beginning is this is, you know, I think it's good to have a coaching agreement and to talk about what the you know how uh, how you're going to guide your conversations how many times you're going to meet uh, that you can both agree that if it's not right that you're both um step out whose role is what so that the coachee understands um what their role is and um the coach identifies their role and i think the times it hasn't worked for me with a coachee is when um they didn't want to do the work or we had values that were different Um, And I can think of one other time when um, the coachee just did not want to participate. So it was, it was just, it was not, they, they were just told they were going to be coached and they just didn't even believe in coaching or want to be coached. So, you know, it's kind of, I think the coaching agreement is very important in the beginning to make sure everybody knows what expectations are and the role clarity of the coach and the coachee. How about you, Wendy? What do you, when we talk about this topic, what, what are you thinking? Well, I always like to have, uh, a, at least a 15 minute conversation, not le- at least I usually offer a 15 minute intro conversation with anybody that I might right. start coaching with so that we can together, you know, even in 15 minutes, you can figure out whether, uh, it's worth having a longer you know, conversation, right? You can figure that out whether there's some sort of connection. Uh, and so I think you, you know, this is someone that you need to feel comfortable talking with and you don't mm-hmm. want it to be someone that, you know, to your point, Dana, you have drastically different, you know, goals from, or, or, uh, values from. So first I would say, uh, you know, being willing appreciating that it is uh, a bit of an adventure sometimes mm-hmm. to to find the right person that fits and and I would say be willing to try a few different people you know that appreciate that it is a relationship and it's not like you have to work with unless I suppose your employer is telling you you have to work with someone uh, right. but but even in those cases usually there are some options so looking for someone that, puts you at ease, makes you feel comfortable that you can uh, have that, you know, mutual, I guess, respect or or trust. I think that's great. Gary, what about you? What is on your mind as you hear this topic of picking, um, you know, how do you pick a coach? Or if you're a coachee, uh, if you're a coach, how do you work with a coachee so that there is a, a great relationship? It's a really interesting question. I'm really glad that we're, we're covering it on the coach area. I think I for this question, I always start with with the three questions that I always encourage somebody to ask when they're exploring um, going into a coaching partnership. First one is, is it coaching that I need? Um, mm. So is it that I have the answers inside myself and I've got to figure out 
what they are and decide for myself, that's coaching. Or is it training? I need to develop skills or expertise or knowledge. Or is it mentoring where I need somebody else's expertise? Or is it something else? Is it is it performance management? I need somebody to motivate me to hit my targets. That None of that is coaching. If it is coaching, is it coaching now? Are you in the headspace now? You've got the time. You've got the the ability to 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 invest, you know, the time in session, but also between sessions to really reflect deeply and and move yourself on. And then the third one is: Is it coaching with this individual? Which is really the question we're asking here. You know, mm-hmm. how do you find the right coach? If you haven't answered, is it coaching and is it coaching now? Then you can't find the right coach. And Dana, your examples of somebody that didn't want to be there. Well, that's not coaching, or it's not coaching mm-hmm. now. That's that. It's not about whether it's the right coaching partnership. But then I think when you come to finding the right coach, for me, it, it's ref- recognizing that the coaching conversation is in partnership. And both of you have to want to be there. So the, the chemistry conversation, Wendy, you're describing exactly right. I would always have you know, quite a significant conversation at no cost with the, with the potential coachee for us both to explore whether we can connect and whether we can have a, a a conversation adds value to to the coachee and the, as the coach that I would feel you know energized and enthused by being in that situation. Yeah. And if I can in that conversation, particularly for somebody that's never been coached before, I I try to have a five or ten minute segment of it where we're actually doing a little bit of coaching with a sense of the kind of mm-hmm. questions, the kind mm-hmm. of dynamic, the the uncomfortable silence, the zone of uncomfortable debate that you get into in a coaching conversation. So that they can experience and say, well, am I comfortable being in that kind of dynamic? And am I comfortable being in that dynamic with this person? Ultimately, I think it's really personal, you know, that, mm-hmm. that there's rules or there's ideas or there's things that you can sort of check off to, to reflect on. But ultimately, I'm in the view that you kind of know, you know, when it's right, you know, and it's, and it's kind of obvious. And I think yeah. that's also true as you start in the coaching relationship that, that, if it's working, in my view, it tends to show up pretty quickly. So if you're starting into that relationship and you're not quite sure whether you're getting anything out of it, well, you should reflect on that because when it works, the, in my experience of, of coaching, it tends to be pretty quickly, pretty obvious that it's a positive thing. Not that everything is solved and resolved, but that it's a powerful kind of conversation and the person is moving on quite significantly and finding new clarity in in useful ways so that's kind of how I reflect on this question I think that's great and I think um the the fact that both of y'all brought up the 15 minute kind of just checking in because there's so much trust that is needed in a coaching relationship right because I think some of the powerful parts of setting up the coaching relationship is everything is confidential and making sure, you know, the the guidelines are are set. And I think it's scary for some people that have never been coached before. They're not going to open up um, on the first, some of them might not. And so giving them that space to answer questions and have a a feeling of of what it's going to be like and what their needs are. And I think that setup is probably that if it's set up from the beginning, it's probably going to be really strong all the way through. If it's not set up strong from the beginning, it probably will will falter a little bit. So what do you think are the biggest challenges? So if you're in a, or whether you're in a large organization or you're in a small entrepreneurial organization, which both of you all are in, what do you think, how do you, if you don't have a coaching program within your organization, how do you go about finding a coach? What are ways that you can find a coach if you want to get a coach for those out there so that they can get that experience? What are your recommendations for both, from both of you? And I'd start with you, Gary. Um, so I think a great place to start is with people that you know, because mm-hmm. people that you know, they might have been coached, they might have coaches, or they might know people who know coaches. And that's a really good way to get started with people that know you well and say, I know a person that I think might be a really good fit for you. And that's that's a really great place to start. Coaching, I would say, is is at a really broad range of price points. It depends on whether your organization's paying or if you're paying for you for yourself. Um, if you're a person who would like to explore coaching and you haven't got, you know, you haven't to pay for yourself and you don't have a lot of money for it, then look at where people are doing their coaching training. Because people who are doing coaching training need to get coaching experience to help them progress and develop. 
And so often they are happy to do coaching at no cost or very, very low cost to get their experience. So actually, that's a really good way to, to start to get a feel for what coaching is. And I remember when I was first starting out in my training and I did some, some coaching with people at really low price points or, or for no money at all, incredibly helpful for me to build my confidence mm-hmm. and build my experience. And for those people, they were able to ac- access something that was helpful for them at a really accessible price point. I love that. Wendy, what are your thoughts about recommendations for people who think they might want a coach and not sure where to start? Well, first, um, I it's not fair you let Gary go first because he stole oh, oh. both Sorry. of the things I was going to say. Oh, darn. Uh, so um, I can add that uh, there that, yes, ICF does, um, the International Coaching Federation does uh, often require people to uh, do a whole bunch of coaching in order to be certified. And so it's a great place for you to, you know, find people that are probably willing to coach for a pretty, uh, low rate. So, um, that that's great, but I, I yeah, I just think going mm-hmm. through word of mouth, right. Finding someone, uh, asking someone, whether it's through some, uh, HR organizations, I know, you know, a lot of times they have contacts, uh, even if they're the HR department at your company doesn't, you know, offer internal coaching, they might have resources that you could tap into, but, but yeah, just, just talking through friends of friends, you know, in, mm-hmm. especially in your industry, uh, you can probably find people that are experienced, uh, in that industry and, and, you know, are, have good followers in that regard or the good reviews. Right. So I'm a big fan of the personal recommendation. That's great. One thing I want to bring up too, as we get ready to close out is that everybody needs a coach and this became a theme, I think years ago at the, one of the Gallup summits. And I think it's, it's stuck with me because we all as coaches should have a coach and we can't be our best self if we're not practicing as well. And so I love that saying that everybody needs a coach and I'm seeing more and more organizations now actually create coaching um, departments where they have coaches that they deploy within the company to coach others. And um, that is an, a newer trend and it's growing. And I think that's something for us to, to think about as we're um, out there either learning to coach or looking for a coach ourselves. but we should be doing both um, as we are coaching. So Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, um, Gary and Wendy, for great insights. Um, We want to make sure that you guys follow us on LinkedIn or engage in our post in any of our social media platforms. We'd love for you to touch base with us. Um, And then tell your friends about the Coacherium. And we'd love for you to listen in next time. So thank you, Gary. Thank you, Wendy, for being with us today. Thanks, Dana. See you soon. This has been another episode of the Coacherium. Follow, like, and subscribe to our content to receive updates on future episodes. Join us again soon in The Coacherium.